Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is me, The Plant Bender. And uh, today's video is another fun one. It's probably some of my favorite videos to do. And it is common or semi-common house plants that I think are pretty easy to take care of. I think any new plant parent can kind of get a hang of them and get them to thrive. So let's jump on into this here. The first one probably can find it at any big box store around. I think it's a pretty common house plant, especially for beginners. Snake plant or sand severa. Also, I'm sorry for the lighting. It is like a snowstorm outside, so I have to use a lot of artificial light and it's causing weird glares everywhere and not working right, but I did want to get this video out to you guys. Um, but this snake plant, now sand severas come in so many different varieties. I'm not exactly sure which variety this one is. I have so many of them back behind me on there. It's kind of like my little San Severa corner where I have a bunch of little ones growing here. But these guys, now these guys kind of have a weird reputation. Of course, you look at the big box store, it's gonna say low light, drought, you know, tolerant. You would never have to water them. You water them once a month, you know, whatever, whatever, which, is true you know that you can definitely do that which i think is which makes them a good plant for the maybe busy plant parents or someone getting new into plant parenting but also what i have learned if you want these guys to really thrive and grow because they can be extremely slow growers especially if you do keep them in lower light aren't watering them very often They'll stay alive, they'll look great, but they will probably look the same as you bought them for a while. You might, if you're lucky, get some pups to shoot out maybe, but you know, that's all kind of, you know, luck of the draw there. What I've learned is if you actually give these guys light, water them on kind of a regular schedule. Don't overwater them, but if they are getting light and you notice that the soil is drying out, water them continuously, you will see a lot more growth. Um, I like to keep mine pretty small and that's mainly because of a space reason. Um, I have some pretty larger plants and I have space for them, but I don't necessarily have space to have large sansveras. Um, so I like to keep mine kind of small because like I said, I keep them back there on this like little corner. I have like six of them back there. They kind of just live back there. Not the best light, but they do get pretty bright light. Um, so I do find myself watering them pretty frequently. Um, I would say maybe once every other week i give them like a nice watering there and they seem to be thriving um leaves are nice and firm here so that is my first plant right damn she thick as fuck Turn second plant now this guy i've had for a while monstera adesonia adesonia depends on how you want to pronounce it um these now when i got him they weren't in the big box stores yet um i had to order him online now most big box stores are carrying them pretty reasonably priced he used to be huge, and when I mean huge, like he was trailing ridiculous. I cut him and turned him into probably 15 to 20 plants that I took to like a plant swap that I had in town here. Um, so now he's, he's kind of finally regrowing. As you can see, he has a bunch of new growth here, even though it's winter. Um, like I've mentioned before, a lot of my plants don't really go dormant in the winter, and I think it's just the conditions that I keep them in. Um, but yeah, these guys, Pretty much, you know, regular watering schedule. Pretty, he's not in any place that gets like crazy amount of light. Um, He's probably five feet away from a window there. Like I said, I do use artificial light during this um, winter time. Like I said, I'm in Pennsylvania. It's gloomy. Today's actually a bright day, but that's only because there's so much snow outside. But, um, so yeah, Monstera Edison, yeah, you can get these for like $14 to $20 at most big box stores. They're a great plant. You know, they give you like a flare if you have something very unique, rare, you know add a little bit of showmanship to any place there they can vine you know they can trail they can grow on a moss pole they can do all those different things so definitely monstera adesonia is one i definitely recommend for plant parents out there the third one here could be a little controversial and it is bird's nest fern he lives in this cute little pot here that you could buy on my etsy shop and my shopify but it is a bird's nest fern now I know when people hear the word fern, they get a little weak in the knees. They start shaking a little bit. This guy, I actually have two of them. I have a much smaller one, but they live in the same area. They live downstairs in, essentially it's my basement, 
but it's where my bathroom is. So it's like a finished basement kind of area. There's one little peephole window. So if you think of like a basement, how they have those little windows, there's one there and he sits like below it on like a little table down there. Um, but I do think because they are ferns, it does get pretty cold down there. Um, especially during the winter time, it's usually maybe 65 down there. Low light, if you know ferns outside, they kind of, they survive outside all year. Mine are all covered with snow outside, but come springtime, they'll be back thriving. And I think that's why he does so well down there. The humidity stays high. Of course, it's a bathroom and shower. Um, it's the basement. But also, I, it, I think it's still getting like that outside dormancy type of thing that it likes to get. It stays pretty cool down there, pretty temperate climate down there. And I just, I, when he dries out, I water him. He's lost a couple leaves, but I think that's just like winter time, but he is thriving. And I'm pretty sure I spent like maybe 20 bucks for him when I got him. He's definitely giving me some new leaves. He wasn't as big, but he was a pretty decent size. As you see, he doesn't really fit in this pot. This is a six inch pot, but I liked him in here and it kind of, I like the the little stand where he sits. So yes, that would be the bird's nest fern. I think this is a great fern if you wanna get into ferns to kind of start with, cause they can be affordable. I know some like the asparagus ferns, rabbit foot and stuff, those can be a little daunting if you wanna step into ferns there. The final plant, this is probably the plant that I think started my plant journey a few years ago. And that is the neon pothos. Now this beauty right here, she's looking a little droopy. She needed water I just watered her. She kind of sits up on a high shelf that's kind of inconvenient to get to. But the neon pothos, like many other pothos, they don't need the brightest of light. They don't need, you know, constant humidity. They don't need, if you forget to water them for a week or two, they'll definitely let you know. As you can see, she's drooping a little bit, but I just watered her. By the end of the day, she'll be all perked up and fine. These plants, I think any new plant parent can take care of. I love the neon pothos though, simply because of the coloring. It kind of gives you a little bit more fanciness than say your regular, you know, Marble Queen or Golden. Um, and so I love this. When I got this, it was in a four inch pot, probably two years ago. And as you can see, she is a beauty. I have also cut her tons of times to get so many different propagations. I have about four sitting behind me. I've given so many away. I'm constantly chopping her because she's constantly growing. Um, she's also kind of started essentially variegating or reverting back to some of her natural colors, which I love. She has some dark spots on her. She has her regular neon. She has like, she's getting some white spots on her. She is beautiful. Like I said, she doesn't require super bright light. She does get decent light, but nothing too special. I think pretty standard light for any house or apartment there. Watering schedule, I could stand and probably water her more often. I tend to forget how big she actually is and her root system is huge in this pot. And so I tend to underwater her. Um, but, and like I said, she is in a kind of hard to reach spot. Like I have to get a stool and everything to get her down, but she always bounces back. She's continuously giving me new growth. As you can see, like I keep saying it is winter time and my plants just are still giving me new growth. So I never really get a chance to take a break and like let them go. Um, I actually end up seeming to be doing more work during the winter because my heat is like electric radiant heat. So it gets really hot and gets really dry. So how most people cut down on watering, I usually have to pick up on watering because every daily everything is drying out. But that's my own personal problem here. But yes, those are my what? Four, so my favorite, easy to care for, maybe beginner house plants that I think anyone can kind of handle that are affordable. So if you have any more, definitely like, comment, share down below. Let me know if you have any of these plants. How do you keep them? What do they look like? Share one with me on Instagram over there at The Plant Bender. And thanks for watching.